Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Welcome to church. It's so nice seeing you this morning. I'll ask us to be upstanding as we begin this service. If you could just wave to someone seated next to you or standing next to you. Yes, welcome them to church. Amen. Amen. It's always a joy when the people of God gather for worship. Thank you for honoring God with your time. This morning we'll begin by reading through Malachi chapter 3. So if you can turn with me there, Malachi chapter 3, we will read the entire chapter. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by as in former years. So I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse. You are whole nation because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will, be not, that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. You have spoken arrogantly against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said, it is futile to serve God. What do we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed, Certainly, evil doers prosper. Even when, even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. Then those who fear the Lord talk with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as your people gather to worship this morning, what a beautiful reminder from your word that if we remain faithful, we hold on to this faith the Lord you will spare us as a father spares a son. That you will clearly put a distinction between the wicked and the righteous. Lord as we begin this service I want to commit these dear ones to you and I want to pray that this service will be a source of encouragement that we will be spurred in the faith to continue into faithfulness. Almighty oh, God that this service will be a source of transformation for our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. We commit ourselves to you as we begin. We pray that the Holy Spirit will overflow, that you will minister 
through us and in our hearts in the name of Jesus. We silence every voice that is not of God. We silence every voice of opposition, every thought that raises itself against the knowledge of the word of God. We declare it powerless through the most authoritative name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we pray that your name and only your name will be lifted in this place. Father, I pray for every leader in this service. I pray that you fill them with your Holy Spirit. And I pray that your presence will be evident in and among your people in this service. So we commit this service to you and we dedicate ourselves to you also. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the service be. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Extend your hand to your neighbor to your left, to your right. Welcome somebody in the house of the Lord this morning. Very good. Has the Lord been good to you? Amen. 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 The Bible tells us that you should enter his gates with thanksgiving. And that we should enter his courts with Praise. praise and that's what we want to do so you want to praise him you want to express our gratitude to our maker the lord of heaven amen amen, amen. let's clap to the lord Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, oh, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus, Tenda Maku, 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 Tenda Maku, Maku, Tenda Maku, Maku, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate Jesus, Celebrate Jesus, Shangilia, yes, 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 Shangilia, yes,
Botswana, me na sema asante. You know that song? Let's go. Mi se me che, kwa kobwana, me na sema asante. What can I say unto the Lord? I come to say thank you, Lord. What can I say? What can I say? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I am told there are some lawyers in the house. Do you have lawyers here? Yes. You know I grew up from Kitale. Eh? So lawyers say, Kula bola shina nyasa e papa. Kuisire kubola urio muno papa. Lawyers, eh? See, it's like that. Kula bola shina nyasa e papa. Kuisire kubola urio muno papa. Urio muno papa. Orio muno papa, kuisi le hubola. Orio kikuyus, gokiugata, kwe mwazani, leo tugire mewega. Gokiugata, kwe mwazani, kwe mwazani, kwe tugire, uga newega, papa newega, ho newega, leo tugire. of praise so only you alone Hallelujah. we give praise to you yes, you who live forever you are the rock of our salvation you yes. are our father you are the father to the fatherless you are the husband to the widows this morning it is you we choose to worship Lord we lay aside every idol we put our crowns on your throne oh God you are highly exalted who can stand before your holy mountain oh God None, oh Father, who can question your ways, Jesus, who can question your judgments, Lord. In you there is no sin, in you there is no darkness. Father, we refuse to enter your temple and live the same way. Lord, as we are in your temple, you are sorting our problems, Jesus. That, Father, healing we are receiving, redemption we are getting, salvation is in your house. Jehovah, we seek your face this morning. Lord, we invite you. May you come, Jehovah, take, sweep over this place, King of glory. May your anointing be evident. May your presence be evident. Lord, take your throne. May your will be done here this day, O oh King. Let your will, not man's will, your will, O oh God, be done in this sanctuary, O oh King. We raise an altar for the Lord that liveth. We lift an altar for the Lord that liveth. Your name is Zaych. Your name is Jairi. Your name is Alpha. Your name is Elishadai. We give you praise, Jesus. You are our healer. You are Rafa. Jesus, we worship you. We exalt you. We lift you, Father. We join with the universe to praise and to bless you. We join with the universe. Please put up Psalms 148. Lord, we join with the universe to praise you. We join with the universe to praise you, Jesus. We join with the universe to praise you. Psalm 148. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We give you praise. Psalm 148. The Bible says, Praise him, all you angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun, moon. Praise him. All you shining stars. Praise him. Praise him, you highest heaven. In the waters above the sky. Let them praise the name of the Lord. 
at his command they were created and he established them forever and ever he issued a decree that will never pass away praise the lord from the earth you great sea creatures and all ocean depths lightning hail snow cloud storm winds that do his bidding you mountains all you hills fruit trees and cedars wild animals and all cattle and small creatures flying birds children let them praise the name of the lord for his name alone is exalted jesus your name alone is exalted that is the name we exalt in this altar the name jesus is the name we exalt here not john not joseph it is your name we exalt in this altar oh god it is you who died and today you are risen seated on the right hand of the lord that today it is you we worship Ikaiti siki kikikaiti Lord it is you you are the one we worship you are the one we worship Jesus you are the one we worship Father we are the one we worship it is you we worship isiki kaiti kikikaiti it is you we worship sekaiti kikikaiti it is you we worship Jesus Oh, we worship you. 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 We bow to you, Father. You alone. You alone, Jesus. You alone. We worship you.
Take the glory, Lord. It belongs to you. Take the glory, Jesus. We bow to you. We bow to you. We bow to you, Father. We bow to you. We bow to you, Father. Jesus is the name. The name that saves us. The name that guarantees us inheritance. That name we bow to. That name we claim above every name. Your name is above every name. In the name we get healing. In that name we get redemption. In that name we are delivered.
it, Father, that, Lord, we join with the elders, we join with the angels, the cherubims, Jesus, to declare holy, holy, are you, Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive praise, glory, honor, and power. You are worthy to open the scroll, our chief high priest. We turn to you, O God. Father, we look at you, O King. We get righteousness. We look at you, Lord. Salvation is guaranteed, Jehovah. We look at you, King of Kings. Healing is our portion, Jehovah. You are our refuge, our firm foundation. You who have established your kingdom that can never end, an everlasting kingdom. You are not man that you will lie. You cannot die like man. Your promises come to pass. That which you declare shall come to pass. We worship you, Jesus. It is you we worship. It is you we extol this morning. It is you we exalt this morning. It is your name we lift above every name. It is you we turn to. It is to you we run to. You are our refuge, O King. You are our fortress, Jesus. Receive the praises of your people this morning, King. May all these prayers, King, as an incense rise to you. And may our petitions find favor with you. Jesus, take your place. Be enthroned in this sanctuary as King. We raise an altar for the worship of the Lord that liveth the Lord of Israel. You, Jesus, are the one that we welcome here. Every principality and power bows to you. Every idol bows to you. Our crowns, we throw them at your feet, O oh God. For you as is greater. Lord Almighty, we submit to you that your will be done in this sanctuary, in our lives, this day and in the days to come. In the mighty and everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let everything that has breath say amen. You can say a big amen. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you honor, Lord. Praise the Lord. Was that worship or was it worship? I, am I the only one who says the presence of the Holy Spirit? Yani, the Lord just came and sat here. He's still here in our midst. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, worship team, for the wonderful time of worship. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome you very, very warmly today to our service this morning. Those who are in the sanctuary, those who are watching us online, a really warm welcome. Um, it's a beautiful day. I can see people are removing their sweaters. I don't know whether it's the worship or whether it's the, the warmth of the, yeah, the sun is out as well. But I tell you, the spirit of the Lord has just come and enveloped this sanctuary with his presence. And we really thank the Lord. I'd like to take this opportunity today to welcome those who are visiting with us for the very first time. Um, if anybody is here in the sanctuary with us today, you've never been to our services. Uh, this is the River of God Church. That's what we call ourselves. We'd like to welcome you to acknowledge your presence. Uh, is there anybody? Could you just put your hand up? Praise the Lord. Please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Um, Anybody, I see somebody else there. Anybody else? Just keep standing. The ushers are going to put something in your hand. Just keep standing. We want to acknowledge you. I see three people only. I'm sure there's more. Anuni men. Yes. Going once. Going twice. Come on. Just stand up. Don't be embarrassed. We're not going to do anything funny or ask you to do anything. Praise the Lord. We'd like to uh, welcome you to our service this morning. And continue to welcome you if you want to come back and worship with us. Uh, we, we love visitors and we'd love to have you as one of us. So we are going to uh, welcome you with a very special song that we normally sing for our visitors. Shall we go?
so much. You may be seated. Thank you for visiting with us. At the end of the service, don't be in a hurry to go. Please visit, uh, go and meet the hospitality team uh, in that room there, the visitor's room uh, to my right, to your left, and they will get to know you a bit more and um, pray with you as well. And you also get to have a nice cup of tea with something nice. I won't tell you what, but there's something. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we also like to celebrate um, our birthday babies today. Anybody celebrated their birthday this past week through today? Any birthdays? Don't tell me. That. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Please stand to your feet. Yes. Stand to your feet if you're celebrating your birthday through this week. From Monday to today, stand to your feet. Is it coincidental that you're sitting next to each other? <laughs> Very interesting. Anybody else celebrated their birthday? Oh, there's somebody else there at, the, at that corner. Happy, happy, oh, somebody else there. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. We are going to sing a happy birthday song to you. Okay. Odiembo and Tanya Amani as well. Wonderful. So you know we like celebrating. Yes. Okay. Who has a reason to celebrate today? <laughs> we need to celebrate something. Any anniversaries? Anybody? Sasa we we. Nikesho. Oh, you're right. Kuja hapa. Kuja hapa. Higher. You know now this guy challenges me, so I cannot. His anniversary is tomorrow. How many years? Seven years. Seven years married to the same woman. Is she here? Ako hapa. Ako wapi? Tunakutafuta. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. No, that's okay. Congratulations. We will celebrate you today, but we will still celebrate you again next week. So utafanya double double pia kama mimi. Sindio? Sawa. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Anybody else celebrating the anniversary? Or something else? Got a new job? Got a salary increase? <laughs> something nice? Moved houses? Ah, you people. There has to be something. All right. So some of you probably are shy, but I'm sure there's something to celebrate. But you know what? Uh, we are very quick to complain when things don't go our way. We need to spend more time thanking God and celebrating even the small things. Like you lose a kilo. That's a big deal. Yeah. You celebrate. Eh? The women, only the women are clapping. Imagine. So, Mimi Niko Huko Pia. Tunajaribu sana. So, I will come and celebrate one of these days. <laughs> Let us pray together. It's good to have you people here and it's good to laugh together. Let's pray. Our gracious Lord, we thank you so much for your faithfulness and your goodness. We thank you, Lord, just for the fact that we can freely come to worship you. We can join together with our brothers and sisters without fear of intimidation. We know there are many who cannot even come into your house to pray together. They do so in hiding, but we can come freely. We thank you. We thank you for this family of Aroji that we can laugh together, celebrate together, have fun together. We thank you, Lord, for your gifts that you have bestowed on us, the gift of health, the gift of life, your provision, so many things that so many times we take for granted. We thank you for every single one of them. And even for the celebrations that we've just had, those who have celebrated their birthdays, one more year is not something 
to take for granted. Those who have ce are celebrating, who have celebrated their wedding anniversaries, just being together for even a week is something to celebrate. So we thank you. We bless you. And now, Lord, as we go into the service, as we continue with the service, Lord, we invite your presence and pray that you'd be with us. Pray for pastors and ministers to us this morning, that you'd use him, Lord, to be a blessing and encouragement to us. We want to thank you even for the gift that we're just about to give up, to offer up to you, and pray that they shall be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And Lord, we even pray for those who are not well today. I just feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to pray for anybody who is sick this morning. And if you're not well in your body, I pray, I ask that you just put your hand on the place that's hurting. The Lord is here this morning. He wants to meet with his people. His presence is in this place. Trust him and look up to him for healing. And Lord, I pray that everybody who is in the service this morning, who is sick, who is not well in their body or even in their mind, that Lord, you would touch and you would heal them. Your healing virtues would flow through the body of every single person who is unwell this morning or their loved ones who may be in hospital or at home. Lord, your Jehovah God, our healer, Jehovah Rapha, I pray, Jehovah God, that you would arise with healing in your wings and that you would heal every single person who needs your healing this morning. Whether it is be physical healing, emotional, or even mental, that you would heal them in the name of Jesus and that you would frustrate the works of the enemy in their bodies and in their minds and in the lives of your children and you would bring everybody to wholeness of mind and of body, O oh Jehovah, because you're God who delights in healing your children. So we thank you and we bless you because we know that you have done it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And I believe the youth and the teens should be going for their services now. So if you could make your way to your services. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the River of God Church. Our vision is to be a life-transforming church that proclaims the kingdom of God. Our mission is to reach people for Christ, refresh believers by the word of God, refine believers for good works, and to release believers to transform the world. With a cheerful heart, it is now time to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. If you'd like to use our M-Pesa services, our payable number is 529-653, account, type, slash offering. Our bank is Standard Chatted Bank, account number 01-02-09-06-98-900. Another episode of Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor premieres this evening at 7.30 p.m. on both her and the church's Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. Stay tuned! We are pleased to announce the third and final wedding bands between Mercy Dinda Mutyotwi and Edwin Muche Wanjiku. If anyone has any legal reason why these two shouldn't be joining a holy matrimony, kindly see any of our pastors. Are you a parent with a child between the ages of 4 to 18? We have some good news for you. The ROG Sports Academy has a sports program that runs every Saturday as from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Some of the sports covered include karate, football, basketball, chess, and to top it all off, there are Bible study lessons that are intertwined within the classes. For more information, kindly contact Pastor Edgar Lukandu on his contact number 726 6986 the men's ministry would like to invite all men for a monthly prayer breakfast happening on the 4th of June from 6 a.m. Come one, come all, and invite all your sons. Discipleship classes are set to begin. Registration is still ongoing on the church's website. That's www.rgchurchkenya.org. If you wish to join the class, kindly register on the website. Prima classes are set to begin in June. To anyone who would like to register, please log on to our website. That's www.rgchurchkenya.org. The cost is 3,000 shillings per couple. 
The Refresher Group Ministry would like to appreciate those who registered to join the Refresher Group during the Refresher Group Awareness Sunday. ROG's Refresher Groups are home-based Bible study groups hosted in different locations and led by members of the ROG Church, which encourage believers to connect with God outside of our main Sunday church services. As we continue to reach people for Christ and refresh believers by the Word of God, we would like to encourage those who are not yet part of a refresher group to contact the refresher group ministry leaders. We shall be having a Thanksgiving service next Sunday during service, so come with all the testimonies as we share the goodness of the Lord. Basil, welcome here. To our visitors, we are so glad that you chose to visit us today. We would like to get to know you better and have a fellowship with you. After the service, Please proceed to the room marked Visitors, where our hospitality team will be waiting on you. Let us now welcome Rev. Tony Kiyama with the sermon. God is good and He is really good. Do you believe those words that God is good? You know, every so often, there is a restaurant on, uh, on Loiter Street that I like to sit next to the window as I watch as people come. And it breaks my heart because we are an angry society. People are sad. And out of a hundred or so people, maybe two or three will be not necessarily laughing, but you, could, you see they are happy. They are just, you know, they are, they are happy. The rest of the crowd, they're just angry. You know, friends, when God is good, we should see it without you saying anything. You should exude a sense of joy because God is good. I know this life has no guarantees, but our guarantee is God. I don't know where you are or what you're going through. But I can tell you this, others have gone through the same thing and come out unscathed. You're not the first or the last. Not to belittle where you are, but to remind you that God is able. Our God is able. So when you say those words, let it not be just culture that God is good. Believe it in your heart. Convince yourself, speak it to you. My God is good. And he is good to me. Even where I am, God is still good. Even where you currently are, the predicament that you're stuck in, in that quagmire of whatever it is, God is still good there. And shortly, it will begin to show. And people will come and find out, what is this thing that you have? Ninini, what is it about your home? About your office? Just where you are. People want to know who you, you are. And may that, and that's revival. That's revival. The joy of the Lord. Let me invite Pastor Bill to come with his team. And uh, he wants to bring us a few notices and then we shall continue. Right. Praise the Lord. Buenas fio sana. Yes, I'll introduce this gentleman. Gentleman and lady uh, flanking me shortly. Um, but I'm pretty sure we have emphasized enough the vision of the church for us to be able to say it together, right? What is the vision of ROG? Don't check up there. I can see some eyes already darting up. What's the vision of our church? We want to be here. Life transforming church that proclaims the kingdom of God. And how we do this is by reaching people for Christ, refreshing believers by the word, refining believers for good works, and you guys are cheating, I can see you, releasing believers to transform the world. That is what we endeavor to be. And um, the different departments in church have been making their contribution towards seeing the realization of this vision. And it is time for the youth and teens 
to make their contribution as well. So we are in a season where the teens and youth are reviving and we want to contribute significantly towards this. We are rebranding, that's the first thing we are doing. You saw the new leadership team uh, presented to us the other day. We are rebranding, we used to be called uh, Broken Jazz, but we said we've been broken for long enough now. <laughs> we want to be whole, so now we are calling uh, ourselves SNL, standing for Salt and Light, okay? Salt and Light, that's what we want to inform um, our mission. We want to shine and spice for Jesus in this space where he has us planted. And so, uh, the last couple of uh, months, we have been doing a lot. It's just that we've not got a chance to get all of you to realize, but a lot has been happening. We've been going for missions. Uh, we have been to at least three high schools. We've been to Alliance Girls High School, Alliance Boys High School, and Kitengela International School. And by God's grace, we've seen about 200 uh, high school students give their lives to Christ. Amen? <laughs> the youth have held a Kesha in this church and invited other churches. And we saw the Lord move. We've seen, we've had game nights here. We've had uh, movie nights here. We've had a teens hangout. A lot has been happening. And we want all of you to plug in, especially for the young guys who have been kind of laying back. I can even see a few of them that are here now. And they should be on the other side, yeah? Our service runs from uh, 11. Immediately after the announcements are done here, we move to the other side. The new building, teens are on ground floor, youth are on first floor. So that's where it happens. Now, from 27th of June to 3rd of July, we are having an initiative we are calling Parklands for Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say that with conviction. Parklands for Jesus. Parklands for Jesus. Yes, and um, that is an initiative to reach out to the Parklands community. As at the last census, there's at least 50,000 adults in the Parklands High Ridge area. We want to reach out to these guys. We want to saturate this place with a clear presentation of God's word. And so during this week, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be uh, having prayer walks and prayer drives, just praying for the different issues in the Parklands area. And in the month of June, the youth will be leading our daily prayers and we'll be praying for issues that are pertinent to the Parklands area. And then on 25th of June, we'll be having a, work, a, a training, a summit for high school prefects here in church. We are trusting God for at least 200 of them. We are trusting God for at least 200 of them to be gathered here. We've uh, contracted some of you to come and share your experience with them. We want to begin a conversation uh, with them that will continue perpetually. So in following years, we want this to be known. ROG is a place to be around this time of the year for high school prefect summit. And then we will have outreaches targeting hostels in the Parklands area, in uh, Ngara area, as well as uh, Westlands area. There are lots of student hostels here. And then campuses as well. We want to do outreaches in the various campuses. Uh, the big event for the campuses will be an apologetics uh, training that will be taking place here, a talk. Uh, we have lots of law schools in the region. Now, how are lawyers wanna... Yeah, let's just say apologetics is a good way of reaching out to them. That's the <laughs> space in theology that asks questions about uh, the reliability of the Bible, science and the Bible, and you know, all those kinds of questions. So we will have a conversation here, and we are trusting that the Lord will draw to himself uh, those he wills. Then for the primary schools, during this week we'll be having the PPIs, the pastoral program uh, instruction. So we will send our teams to various primary schools to share. And then for the corporates in the area, we want to visit them. The banks, the uh, uh, supermarkets, we want to send our teams there to attend the morning devotions. For those who have morning devotions, we want to be invite, <coughs> invited for the lunch hour fellowships. We want to go and minister and let those guys know there's a church here and they can plant, uh, get plugged into these communities, this community called ROG and be planted uh, here. And then we are also uh, seeking to intentionally have presence in the various uh, media outlets. So we are partnering with Kubamba 
And on that Saturday, we will have games here. Saturday, the 2nd of July, for the area youth. We want guys to come in. We'll play basketball. We'll uh, have Scrabble, Monopoly, chess, board games, yeah? Just hang out with young people here in church. Uh, this will be relayed live on KTN in the show called Kubash that is run by uh, K Crew. And then on Thursday evening, we'll take over the Westgate Mall. And so we want to take young people there and just make noise about Jesus. So we will be bowling uh, and conversations are ongoing. We just want to chill at the mall and have fun together. And then on that Sunday, Sunday the 3rd of July, we will be having a concert here. Yeah? And we are inviting various artists and all. And from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., we will have fun together here with uh, the young people. Now, how you can help? And that's where my friends here come in. First of all, this will call for lots of prayer. We are trusting God to draw to himself the lost in this area. And there are lots of those in the Parklands area. So pray with us that the Lord will draw to himself these young people. But we also know that you know someone that we don't. So you might have some helpful contacts. Maybe a high school principal or a teacher in a certain school, or maybe you work in one of these corporates uh, that we are talking about. In the earlier services, we had, for instance, uh, Dr. Chakala, who was here and he lectures at the law school. And after hearing this, he said, you know, yes, I could organize. You guys come to the school. We get something going. So conversations like those. Engineer uh, Kivuitu at KBC is willing to have us come for a lunch hour service. So opportunities like those, those contacts and networks, we want to leverage them to share the gospel in this space uh, around here during that season. And then availability, in case you could make some time to join us for any of these initiatives during that week, we'll also be happy to have you join us. But most importantly, money. You can turn to your neighbor and say money. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> cash, chapa, we need money. This project is going to cost quite a bit. And so the youth, uh, have designed various strategies to raise money. One of those includes t-shirts. So uh, I thought for modeling purposes, <laughs> it's good to have both Mzungu and Africa <laughs> to kind of represent our community here. So uh, TJ, you can just turn. Parklands for Jesus right there. Uh, beautiful t-shirts come in different uh, sizes as well as colors. Uh, ROG Youth, this is our official logo now. And... Um, We'll also have that in various colors. Hoodies, many of them. It's July. It's very cold. Each of you needs one of these nicely branded saying Parklands for Jesus. So please buy this merchandise. Uh, we want you to start registering those interested. So kuchomeka. So we just want to buy what you assure us you will. Uh, we want to print what you assure us you'll buy. So please let's know at the back there. Once we are done, uh, there'll be some young people signing up. Let's know what you want. T-shirts, hoodies, caps, armbands, all will be for on sale. And then from the month of June, the youth will be selling snacks. So after service, we will be selling uh, hot dogs, sodas, nini nini. Eat a lot of this. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> you are greatly encouraged. <laughs> uh, at some point, we may call upon you to bring your cars here. Instead of going for those car washes, nini nini, bring them here and get your car washed and a soul saved. Amen? So youth are willing to wash cars, to polish shoes. We will do everything we need to do to get money from your pocket. Legal things uh, to help us finance this mission. So you're all welcome to be part of this. And in conclusion, uh, since Jesus said we should be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, our Jerusalem is the Parklands community. But the children's church are showing the way in terms of going beyond Jerusalem. And so uh, during this same season, first week of July, they are going for a mission in uh, Ilkilorit, Kajiado County. Those Maasai girls you saw here during children's uh, Sunday, we are now going uh, to where they came from. And uh, as you walked in, you must have received a sleep at the entrance that describes what you could give. Children's church are creative. Them, they don't want money. They want you to get a box like this. It's described in those slips. And there are items there that they want you to fill. 
you know, inside. And they say, uh, they don't want you to do this alone. Do it with your children. So that as a family, you will fill like a small box like this, bring it to church. They're trusting God for 200 of this. And they'll take to those kids in uh, Kajiado. They are calling this initiative Christmas in July. And as you bring that box, they want you to pray over this box, that the Lord will touch whichever child touches this, that they will get to know the Lord and not turn away from the faith. Amen? So this is a mission season, and we want the whole church to plug in. So please join us, and let us make Christ known. Let's make noise about Jesus. Amen? God bless you. Amen. Where there is no vision, people, here there is a vision. So thank you, Bill, and your team. We bless the Lord for you. Parklands for Jesus. There will be church when we are gone. Amen. And the men, we are here. They said they want us to pray for them. So the men, on Saturday at 6 in the morning to 7.30, We'll be here for prayer. We'll be here for, for prayer. We'll pray for our young people. We'll also pray for ourselves, pray for our businesses, pray for our country, pray for the church of Jesus Christ. So men, on Saturday, at, coming Saturday at 6, 7.30, come, let's pray together. And at 7.30, we share breakfast, and then we can break for the day, and I'm sure we shall do exploits for God. And Kibanya who's our current men's director, is very excited, and we are looking forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And yes, Jemima, the worship was, uh, was amazing. Yeah, we bless the Lord for this team. When you, have been, when, you've, when you spend time with God, then you take people back to the God that you've been with. And it's, it's, it's not science, it's just, it's, it's as simple as that. When you spend time with God, it will show. And I bless the Lord that we are, we are a church that seeks the Lord in every department. So we thank God for that. Let me invite you to stand. As we read through Malachi, let me invite Pastor Caro to read for us Malachi chapter 3, uh, chapter 2, Malachi chapter 2 from verse 10. Uh, to 16. Malachi chapter 2 from verse 10 to 16. We started with teacher Beatrice Odongo and then after that Pastor Caro and then Pastor Bavon and they have done an amazing job. And so we thank God as we go through Malachi. Remember our mission, our, our statement for this year, our theme for this year is Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter Three, and we bless the Lord for his grace. So let us pray as we read through Malachi chapter 2, verse 10 to 16. And we will be reading from the NIV. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your grace and love. We thank you for this day. We know, mighty God, that you are able to do more than we could ever think, dream, or imagine. Lord, prepare our hearts. Forgive us where we've sinned against thee. That which we have given, receive it. Almighty God, from a heart full of gratitude and obedience to your word, we invite you, Almighty God, and thank you that you are here with us, Almighty God. We invite you, Lord, to minister to our hearts, to challenge, to rebuke, to correct, and to teach us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, what a privilege and an honor to have your word with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Malachi chapter 2, from verse 10. Sorry about that. Malachi Malachi, Malachi chapter 2 from verse 10 to 16. Do we not have one father? Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? Judah has been unfaithful. A detestable thing has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Judah has desecrated the sanctuary the Lord loves by marrying women who worship a foreign god. As for the man who does this, whoever he may be, may the Lord remove him from the tents of Jacob, even though he brings an offering to the Lord Almighty. 
Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask, why? You ask, why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. May the Lord bless his word. In Jesus' name we read. Amen. Please have your seats kindly. Thank you, Pastor Caro. Friends, Jesus was very, very unpopular. In fact, I dare say that he was so unpopular that they killed him. They didn't kill him because they loved him. They killed him because what he said was so unpleasant. Because he dared to speak the truth. John the Baptist, he lost his head because no one else was willing to tell Herod that what he was doing was wrong. So John the Baptist wasn't popular. In fact, he was so unpopular. So, so unpopular. When the, when the, the multitudes were coming to receive baptism, and the baptism of John was the baptism of repentance. He called those who are coming brood of vipers. Alwaita manyoka. <laughs> Jesus, in Matthew 23, 23, he calls the people whitewashed tombs. That on the outside, they look pleasant and clean. But on the inside, just filthy, dead, dry bones. Smelly, dry, filthy bones. Vileness covered by whitewashed tombs. It is in the days that we live that the church has superstar ministers. Yet the Jesus we are preaching was so unpopular because when you preach the truth, you will not be lovable. Even among your friends, the people who speak the truth are not popular. They don't have many friends. It is in the day that we live that we have very popular churches, but they are popular because the truth is not called out. Sin is not called out. Because when you say it as it is, when you say it as it is written or prescribed in scripture, it will hurt. It will hurt. It will offend people. So the true gospel is offensive. And it's not popular. The book of Malachi, God is rebuking the prophets first, the priests. And he's saying that you are guilty of not preaching it as it is. Preaching it. Pastor Carol reminded us that we are offering God lame animals. That which is unworthy is what we present to God. By how we serve, even how we come to church, even how we present ourselves. I want to remind us, especially in right now, in the election season, that God has no political party. There is no party ordained in heaven. There is no party that was made by Jesus Christ. He didn't die for any political party. 
So don't tell us that this is the party that God wants. It's only nonsense. And in this generation, we have seen previously men of God, honorable, who are false prophets. Because when you say that God has said so and so will be the head of state, if they don't become, you are a false prophet. And false prophets in the Bible, it is seen that if you prophesy and it is not true, you die. So be sure, if you say it is this one, make sure it is from the Lord. Because if it is not, you are a false prophet. And we have many of those in this country. In every election, we, they come up. And their churches are full of people. People who are being led by false prophets. The blind leading the blind. All the way to hell. Ikabod, mungu alienda zamani, akuagi uko. Here, in verse 10, it starts by saying, Do we not all have one father? Did not God, did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? Friends, I dare say this. As a believer, it should not be that we should give bouncing checks. You might give it to save face. But remember those who are receiving. You are embarrassing the entire household of faith. Because they say, these people who are saved, they don't just say you. Ata wa meokoko wanapatia naga bouncing checks. When one pastor fails, the entire body of Christ is embarrassed. Isn't that true? Why are we being unfaithful to one another? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yet the world and the, world and the church, right now they resemble each other. The church and the world look the same. Tabia ni zile zile. Wamama, vai ni kamisi. I don't know what happened to petticoats. I want to remind you sisters here. A petticoat is not a fashion statement. It's a moral obligation. Vaka misi dada. Vaka misi. Where are your petticoats? It is a moral obligation. It is imperative for you. Mama umeolewa. You are a grown woman, married or not. You walk through church without a petticoat. Sasa pastor hapa ni kuanza kuongea na ndimi. Reke boko taraka shoto. Hey. Grow up. Bonus fuel. What happened? Where is it written that a petticoat is sinful? Let us start teaching our children from Sunday school. Let them start wearing petticoats there. They don't start wearing petticoats when they are endowed. No, they start there. So that they know that it is important for a girl to cover that which the Lord has created. Buonas fiwe. Wamama muna nisikia? Hallelujah. Buonas fiwe. This gospel is unpleasant. It's not pleasant. But it's the truth. It is the truth. And husbands, the Bible here is saying, Judah, verse 11, Judah, and there's no way to say these things whispering. Judah has been unfaithful. A detestable thing has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Judah has desecrated the sanctuary the Lord loves by marrying women who worship other gods. As for the man who does this, whoever he may be, the Lord remove him from the tents of Jacob, even though he brings an offering to the land to the Lord Almighty. 
It is saying here that the essence of the church of Jesus Christ is not shillings and cents. It's holiness. Holiness. Husbands, be faithful to your wives. Hallelujah. Kwa muaminifu ndugu. Wacha tamaa. Tosheka na huyo mmoja. These men are coming from far. <laughs> but two are good enough. Be faithful. Let the men in church be different from the men outside of church. There must be a distinction. There should be a difference between those who are born again and those who are not born again. When you're born again, you don't flat. Kama watakufa kwa sababu wao kuwanunulia lunch wacha wakufe tutawazika. Kama huyo dada lazima arumunulia lunch ndio asikufe. Pastor hawatakuwa na kazi si huo kazi ya pastor ni kuzika. Wacha wakaenja tu wazike. Bwana asifiwe sana. And you small girl there. If you see this man as a ring stay away. What are you doing messing around with another woman's husband? <laughs> you know, many years ago, when we would talk about sexual purity, it, we would talk about sexual purity among the youth. Today, Sexual purity is even in the homes. Wababa. <laughs> Wanaume. Bill. Tell the youth that sex before marriage is called fornication and it is sin. There's a difference between sexual intercourse and a handshake. But nowadays, people sleep with each other more than they shake hands with one another. <laughs> May the Lord have mercy. The church advocates for purity. Fornication is sin. Young men, if you burn, marry. This week, this is your girlfriend. Next week is this other one. Next month is that other one. What are you looking for? <laughs> Marriage is not easy. It's called responsibility. Oh, now to shake. May the Lord have mercy. The church must be different. It should be different. We must live for righteousness. In Jesus' name. And pastors, we should focus on people, not on the basis of what they bring to church. You know that a man has been cheating on his wife, then he brings a big offering for the building. Stay with your money. Kwanda kabisa, this way. You don't want your money. The Bible here says, he's saying, even though he brings an offering to the Lord Almighty, we should not receive it, and we shall not receive it. You cannot bribe God. But there are churches where God is bribed. And I want to tell you, it is not God you are bribing, it is that man. And God will deal with him accordingly. False prophets. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. And grant us the courage to admit when we are wrong. And to ask for forgiveness. Because even I that stand here, I am not perfect. All of us struggle with sin, but we must hold each other accountable. We must uphold holiness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You keep, you, we, you, we, you weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. You ask, what is this 
Why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Brothers, the Lord is saying that he is a witness for the wife of your youth. When you are raising your voice or you are lifting up your hand to hit her, the Lord is there as a witness. The Lord is there as a witness. Because you have a responsibility to protect her, to provide for her, and to be a priest. Treat your wife well. Buwana asfiwe. Umununulia kamisi alafu umpende. Umpende alafu umununulia kamisi. Friends, I know you think I'm joking here, but let me tell you something. At weddings, nowadays I don't stand here many times when the bridesmaids are coming in. I don't stand here. You know there is a light outside, eh? and here is darker. Most of these bridesmaids, you know they are wearing those chiffon things, eh? and they are really pretty dresses. But when I stand here, as they are walking in, I'm like, ooh, Jehovah. I just sit. I let them come to the Lord. Because it is the Lord who says, come as you. Ah. Mimi si jambia mutu wakuje. Mimi si Jehovah. My name is Tony Kema and I'm born again. My name is not Jehovah. I know there's a Jehovah wanyonyi in Western, but it's not me. Jehovah is the one who says, come as you. Na kamisi yama bila we kuja. Lakini si mimi. Sasa ukiwaona wakitembea and these chi- these girls are <laughs> buona sphere. So my sister, because I am married and I am human and I am born again. And since sijapigiliwa hapa na misumari, I walk out and sit there until they wo- all walk in. Now when they are here I come back to the presence of the Lord. It's not a joke. It's serious business. It's serious business. Sometimes when they are walking, the slit is all the way. Muna sumbuwa wachungaji sana wadada. I keep wondering. <laughs> and where are these girls work? And you work with them in the office. How do you survive the day? No wonder marriages are falling apart. I pity you guys. Pray for your husbands' wives because they are hongo zuko. They are crocodiles. Is a crocodile infested? Waters. More than But the truth must be told. Truth must be spoken. Husband, this is serious business. The Lord is saying that I am a witness to your wife. Has not God made them one? One. God made them one. And why one? Because God is seeking a godly offspring. When the seed is wrong, the whole plant is bad. True? Now, we have a responsibility to raise a godly offspring. And the guarantee is that, not that they will not struggle, the guarantee is when you raise them in the ways of the Lord, they shall not depart. They might stumble, but they will come back because they know the road home. Now, as a church, we are committed to this completely. And I have realized that I can only pastor a few, not everyone. And not all of you go to a cell group. But it is imperative for all of you to hide the word of the Lord in your heart. Because when you hide the word of the Lord in your heart, it's the only way to overcome sin. And God hates sin. And so as a church, we have decided, let everyone internalize the word of God. So we are memorizing scripture. We began with Psalm 121. 
And every one of us, you are required as a family to have a few days in a week where you sit and memorize that portion of scripture. That entire chapter, Psalm 121. And after we were done with that, we went to Matthew chapter 5, 1 to 12. And after that, we went to Psalm 51. And now we are in Malachi chapter 3. Now, there are some of you here who have not even begun with Psalm 121. Nine months into the year. Nine months later, you haven't. And remember, we have a responsibility to raise a godly offspring. And only the word. Five months. Yeah, five, I mean, five, nine months from when we began. So the question I'm wondering is this. When was the last time you and your wife and your children sat? You know, let me tell you something. Five years, five years ago, in the month of March, the second Sunday, can you remember what I preached? Chances are you can't. But if you memorize that portion of scripture, five years down the road, you will not forget it because it is embedded in your spirit. You see, friends, when the foundation is right, it doesn't matter what you build. It shall last for years. When our children are away from us, they will not be swept by the wind of doctrine. And there's a lot of confusion in the days that we live. We have boys who think they are girls. We have girls who think they are boys. Even what we thought was obvious, when you're born a boy, you're a boy. Nowadays there's so much confusion, you find a man who thinks he's a woman, as in there's so much confusion, they don't even know which gender they are. But ground them in the word, and there won't be confusion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There won't be confusion. The day he becomes a husband, he will be a solid husband who will love his wife and raise a godly offspring. When she's a, she will grow to be an amazing mother who will bring up a godly generation. But when she fails, she fails generations to come. When he fails, he fails generations to come. Let me tell you something, friends. The greater crisis is not not having a roof over your head. The greater crisis is failing generations that have not come yet. Because that roof over your head might not be there 100 years down the road. But your generations will still be there. So if they are great generations, you know, they don't need to inherit houses from you. They will build their own homes. Many of you here, your fathers gave you nothing except education. And some of you even worked for that education. But today you would live in bigger houses than your father had. So even your children, they might live in bigger houses. They, I pray that they will live in bigger houses than the ones you have. That they will build for themselves, just like you build for yourself. But the foundation must be right in Jesus' name. There must be a remnant of righteousness and godliness in the generation that we are in. Friends, we have a responsibility. And the Lord is saying, he brings the two of you together, however you met, wherever you met, so that you shall raise a godly offspring. And so it must be a tag team. It must be a tag team. We must work together. Come, Pastor Caro. We must work together. The strengths she has are not the strengths I have. I cannot be a mother. She cannot be my father. Buona sana. Hallelujah. When she goes to the supermarket and she's buying things, there are things I can never buy. There's no way I can walk around there and buy chocolate for my children. For me, that is a waste of money. This man is supposed to be buying meat and other solid things that have health benefits. But when she buys chocolate, she's not buying for the body. She's buying for the heart. And I cannot be Caro and she cannot be Tony. Hallelujah. So it's a tag team. And so, come TJ. You see, when we are both of us, chances are TJ will rarely look at me. I will be here. <laughs> most of the time she's looking at the, the mother. He is looking at the mother most of the time. He only looks this way when it concerns the wallet. 
I can tell you the truth. There is a day I went to find Pastor Mbutu. I was quite discouraged. <laughs> because that week, they were on holiday. Every morning, they would come into our room. And they would all go to the mother's side. And leave. TJ, leave. Toria, leave. Thayo, leave. So, the following day, the same. The only day I remember, anyone came to my side was not for me. They had been sent by the mother. I just had, then I had somebody come to my side, pick my wallet, and take it to the mother. <laughs> they didn't even have the nerve to ask me. Naniangu. <laughs> so I came and asked Pastor Mbutu, is there something wrong with me, or are they all like that? <laughs> he gave me a very encouraging response. And so, <laughs> I cannot be this boy's mother. Because when he brings nonsense, <laughs> he will know I'm not his mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is why I called him here publicly. To remind him <laughs> that I am not his. Nasijaba troza kwa sababu skata iku kauka. Kamisi ya iku kauka. You see, friends, eh? Mothers are very good. And we all love our mothers. And fathers have a special place in heaven. <laughs> we might not have a special place in their heart, but we have a special place in? Because even God is called Father God. <laughs> but it is also important to remind them that this one is not our corporate wife. Wakikuja wanakuja polepo is not our corporate because they will go. And then even them they will have girls. And then she will be broken because she gave everything. And then they will have other special girls. Then she will realize that it's now time to invest where it counts. In the seat bed. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was straight from heaven. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto thee, invest where there are returns. Here. Because these ones will go. These ones will? And they will have special friends. And they will think that we are toast. Bongolala. Because we have never been in love the way they are in love. love. And at that time, she will need a shoulder to cry on. The shoulder she had ignored. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean the shoulder that was just here. Amen. Buona <laughs> sui, son. Thank you, Pastor Caro. Thank you, my son. Mothers, you've had. You know, there's a lot of truth here. He who has ears has. But the truth is, the mothers will never stop loving their children. Even when they are gray, they will still love them. They will never stop loving them. Even when they are old, when they call, hello daddy, is mommy there? Just know you can never be mommy. But you have a place, special place in, in heaven. But we must work together to make sure that we raise a godly offspring. So we must internalize scripture, the two of us first. And then once we know those scriptures, then we must teach them. They must memorize. They must memorize and internalize. Because when they are out of our hands, 
they will have the word with them. They cannot remove it. What you know as in you, you can't leave it. You can't remove it away. You can't remove it out of your self. We shall not be there. But we can guarantee where they are, they have the word. We can guarantee that where they are, they have the word. Because you cannot give what you don't have. And that is the responsibility. That is why the Lord categorically says that he seeks a godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Because when you are unfaithful to the wife of your youth, you hurt your son. You hurt your daughter. You hurt your children. They are hurt. They can no longer hear from you. They can no longer receive from you as a husband. They can't because they no longer respect you. They no longer love you. They just tolerate you as a father. So you have failed in your unfaithfulness. And that's why the Bible here is saying, guard yourself. Guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful. Because when you do, you lose more than you can see. You lose an entire generation. Because that young man, that young woman is broken, his heart beyond description of words. But the Lord is good because the Lord is a God of second chances. The Lord will restore for himself. And so even for you single parents here, don't give up. And never rise from your knees because it is only on your knees that you can win this battle. Because the Lord is like a, the devil is like a rolling lion looking for somebody to devour. So you must be relentless as a single parent. You must be relentless. You can't afford to lower your guard as a single parent. You must fight twice as hard. And I can guarantee you the results will be twice as good in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Because our God is good. Our God is here. And our God is on our side. In Jesus' name. I want us to conclude in prayer. Because our God is good. And our God is able. And let me tell you something, friends. Even that which he has stolen, the Lord will pay us back. He will restore. That is the promise. He will restore. Even what the canker wants. And our children will be great in the land. But we must choose faithfulness. We must purpose and choose faithfulness. And we do not seek to be popular. We choose to be truthful in love. We must be different from the world. We must and we should and we shall in Jesus' name. Because even holiness is by his grace. Because his flesh throws tantrums and we fall every so often. And that is why... Even when we speak the truth, we speak it in humility and in brokenness. Because we know tomorrow it is us. But I must pick you up today when you fall. So that you shall pick me up tomorrow when I fall. In Jesus' name. Let us stand on our feet as we conclude in prayer. Thank you, my son, for bringing me water. We are proud of you. One us through. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you because you have called us for such a time as this. Because you don't use perfect people. You don't, people, you don't use people who are perfect. You use people like us. Who have obvious faults. And Lord, as we read through scripture, we can see. That you use people like David. And Rahab. And Tamar. And Moses. And Lord, it gives us encouragement that you are a God who can use anything, even us. And Lord, we submit ourselves to you this day. And we ask for your forgiveness and your strength. And we pray that your name shall be exalted high above all else. That you shall meet us at our point of need according to your riches in glory. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that grace will be found here, river of God. That Lord, we shall be a remnant. The Lord, we shall love one another. We shall tolerate one another. We shall challenge one another. We shall rebuke one another. We shall hold each other accountable. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus Christ, we shall not kill the ones who fall, but pick them up and embrace them that they can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Father, we love you, and we thank you for the opportunity to know you. And I pray, almighty God, that the joy of the Lord will be seen in us 
It will flow out of our hearts, almighty God. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the worship today. Thank you for the ministers who have spoken on this altar before. Lord, may you continue to use them. And that word will continue to grow in our hearts. Thank you for our children. May they never turn their backs on you, Lord. I pray that you will bless them, that they shall be great in the land. Jehovah, in Jesus' name, we bless you. And we declare that you are God alone. We submit ourselves to you because you are God, you are good, and you are on our side. As you live today, may the Lord shine his face upon each one of you. May his favor be evident over your life. May that which is yours that the devil has taken or touched, may our God in heaven pay you back a hundredfold. May the peace of God, that peace that surpasses human understanding, may that peace keep your heart. May the joy of the Lord fill and saturate every inch of your home. May the joy of the Lord be your portion. Remember you have authority. You have power on your tongue. Declare life over your life and the issues that surround your life. Over the nation of Kenya, the nation of Israel, and as the Lord may lead you. And on every road you travel on, declare on this road today with authority from Jesus. On, I take authority and declare life over this road that no one will lose their life or have their property destroyed. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And I declare, may God be with you. Amen.